Mr. Hemaka Amarasuria, former chairman and CEO of Singa Sri Lanka, chairman of Sri Lanka Insurance, Nations Trust Bank and MDB Group. Mahasangayin Avasarai, Honorable Leader of the Opposition, <coughs> several leaders of the SJB, ladies and gentlemen, friends. When I walked into this room, uh, the title of my presentation as I made it, where should we go from here, Sri Lanka? But the real title of my presentation, which I did not know, uh, is uh, Business Expansion and Export Growth. But I can envisage there isn't much difference between the two titles, so I will be able to manage this presentation for you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to first talk a little bit about the much maligned uh, state-owned enterprises, SOEs, a wealth of assets lie within that group of companies and corporates. But why are they maligned? It is purely because over the years, we have had very bad, very poor management of these institutions. I had a brief experience of four years. It's not the workers of the corporates. It's not the board of, uh, it's not the unions. It's not the people, but mainly the fault has been lying with the board of directors. So I would suggest to the SJB hierarchy that while you cannot have shadow, shadow cabinets, now I know the reason why you cannot have shadow cabinets, but set up some shadow board of directors for the SOEs. And I can tell you, if you give the young professionals of this country a chance, not, not uh, make ridiculous appointments to the state enterprises, I had a, a raving lunatic in my board of directors in one of the state-owned enterprises. And I had to not handle the unions. The unions worked with me very comfortably. I had to tackle the board of directors. So please, uh, my appeal to you, don't write off the uh, state enterprises because we have invested so much of money in these enterprises. Give our young professionals a chance and then over the next two years, build them up. You can pick a few, you don't have to pick the whole board, but single-mindedly don't write the owner, state ownerships off, build them up. The second point I'd like to mention about, I've been working with government in the shadow of my private sector career. For 25 years, I've been, uh, 22 years, I've been uh, uh, heading the Southern Province Industrial Service Commission, and there lies a lot of wealth in the industrial uh, in ministry, there are something like 40 industrial parks. I'm not sure the, exactly the number, but out of these industrial parks, only about 35% have been filled up. Now these in, uh, enterprises or these industrial parks are spread across the country in every province other than the north, and that gives the local industrialist and entrepreneur a chance to get into uh, to industry because the state provides the water, the electricity, the power, and the roadways. They only have to invest in the machinery and the buildings. So uh, I have seen railway coaches being made in those enterprises. I have, made, I have seen powder tea being exported in those enterprises. So uh, what I'm saying is look at that. It's a small gem, gem of an opportunity for government. Uh, revitalize them. You don't have to in, in, uh, invest any more money the money is already invested over 25 years. In 1993, under the Industrial Development Bill, uh, these enterprises were set up by a former prime minister who, who uh, appointed me to this board and I have been stuck with it for the last 25 years. So now I come down to my formal presentation. Yes. How do we expand business and how do we create employment. There are plenty of opportunities in this country to provide employment and expand the business. Now with the currency uh, being adjusted, exports have become possible for Sri Lankan exporters because at least they can command a competitive price. Not the best price in the world, but they can challenge their competitors who have been dominating them for years. So, second thing is product. Sri Lanka is weak on products, but we can 
subcontract our products. As Mr. Dr. Harsha said, from other countries, we can subcontract to them, we can subtract, reverse it, subcontract to us, and we can give opportunities to the small and medium sector to work with the bigger companies and set up a competitive export products to go across the world. So though on the silver lining of the uh, currency depreciation has been the pricing of exports. Even the smallest exporter up here, I know there are some exporters up there, uh, they can now compete with the world market. So let's take this opportunity to try price. Don't look at the margin, price low. Get into those markets. Once you get into the markets and establish your contact with foreign uh, in enterprises, then trust prevails, friendship prevails, and thereafter a business relationship gathers, and then from there you can become big entrepreneurs. That is the current only break we have from this current economic crisis. I would now touch, there is a presentation from my friend Professor Lakshman Matavala on the 200 government enterprises, but I just want to touch on that and say that that was a game changer for Sri Lanka because that changed the entire uh, scope of exports. 50% or more than 50% of Sri Lanka exports are from textiles and garments. And that came from this one game changer. So we got to look at big game changers if we want to change the whole scenario of the Sri Lankan business community. And there are two, uh, two major projects which are already on, uh, which have been badly led, led by those who are involved in them. One is the ICT BPO project, and the other one is, of course, the tourist industry. Now, those industries are so important, they cannot be subjugated to a junior or a, a corporate chairman or something like that. They have to be driven either by the head of state or by a very senior minister because these two will be both game changers. In fact, export is always gone halfway through. ICT, now the only good thing that our current president has done is he's building some ICT parks. The only good thing he has done so far. And he's, I don't know why he wants to build five parks, but in 1993, the industrial uh, presidential task force for science and technology recommended uh, I was in that committee, and we had uh, several leading uh, entrepreneurs and innovators in that committee, and they recommended industrial parks. And we almost, we identified the site in Jaila next to the airport, and, and what happened? Elections came, and there was no ICT park. And now we are reawakening after 30 years, 30 long years. Supposing we had that industrial park at that time, I reckon we may not have encountered all these export crises that we have today. Because ICT grows very rapidly once it picks up. The growth is not single digit, it's double digit. Even now, Sri Lanka is growing by 20% or more. And now uh, we have those fantastic under, underground marine cables going across the world, taking our data and our voice at a very rapid pace to the whole of the world. So this is a very precious industry for us, and it should not be second charged. It should be led either by the head of state, uh, currently the head of state is leading it, but in future, or by a senior minister. Tourism, what have we done with tourism? Uh, they have kept on, they have not yet got a single, <coughs> single global campaign going in 20 years. Not a single campaign. The last tagline that I heard was Sri Lanka, a land, uh, uh, land uh, unlike any other or something like that. And when the tourists come and ask, why, why are we different from the other countries? Why are you saying Sri Lanka, a land like no other? Can you say what is the difference that you have? So what we should have is a simple tagline uh, for Sri Lanka tourism, like Sri Lanka, the Pearl of the Orient, which is a book, a book uh, title or something like that, which can be understood by everyone because the pearl is like Sri Lanka, the shape. It's like the people of Sri Lanka, simple, unique, and decent. So uh, if we really drive the export, uh, the industrial uh, and uh, uh, 
tourist markets across the world. It has to be a global campaign. It can't be uh, one in Dubai and one in some other place. It has to be global with one tagline and uh, brilliant advertising and marketing. And I'll tell you, even now Sri Lankan uh, are still a major, major location for tourists who are coming back. I'm slightly involved with the tourist industry, so I know they are wanting to come back here. Even despite all this, they want to come and see the magic of our youth rebellion. And this is the best time for Sri Lanka to showcase tourism and ICT, because the whole world knows, seen us, seen our youth, and they've fallen in love with our youth. The way they handled the, the rebellion, the way they conducted themselves, it has been absolutely brilliant. I think they're comparing it to the French Paris Revolution in the 1980s. And so, I'm not going to sp spend more time talking to you, but with my experience uh, and with what I've seen around uh, the world and around here, I think Sri Lanka has a great future and don't feel despondent about our country. When our go government comes back, everything will be okay. And we will put our heart and soul together to make Sri Lanka not the beggar of Asia, but the star of Asia in 10 years. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs>